turtlenecks. Thumbs up or thumbs down for turtlenecks? <laughs> <laughs> turtlenecks, yeah. It was a clothing item I decided to wear and it turned into a viral uh, <laughs> disaster. <laughs> but it was amazing at the same time. So I'll be, uh, I'll be the turtleneck guy from now on. I don't know what's wrong with a guy that wears that nowadays, man. I don't know. It's a little weird, but you know. Everybody got their own taste, you know? <laughs> well, I think I'm gonna like play it up here and there whenever I get a chance. Uh, you'll see me rocking a turtleneck look in some sort of fashion. Should be exciting the next one. Have you ever worn a turtleneck? I don't think I ever did. <laughs> and I don't think I ever will. I don't think it goes good with me. You know, I like the suit a lot better, but um, you know, some people like it. <laughs> you have more than one? It was only one. I didn't. I didn't plan this to be a Fedor sweater moment. Three on three cage match with three aliens. They come over to take over the Earth. You and two other people. Who are your two other people to defeat these aliens? My brother and my coach Juan Candel. I mean, that's my boys. You know, <laughs> we've been training together for a while. I know what they can do. Let's go with Brock Lesnar and Kane Velasquez. <laughs> You're given a choice, flying or invisibility. Which one do you choose? Flying, this seems fun. <laughs> flying, get your places quicker for sure. <laughs> You're like Vegeta. Your favorite golden girl? <laughs> no, golden girl. I don't, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> oh, I know golden girls too. I just can't remember their names. Um, I like the short, the short one. Uh, What's her name? Uh, she's still like an actress today. Betty White? I think so, yeah. I like her. The zombie apocalypse happens. You have a backpack, you put three weapons in there. What are your three weapons? Um, we'll go with, uh, with a sword. Go with um, a high capacity drum uh, automatic shotgun. And... Um, Maybe just like a short, uh, a short combat knife. Three weapons: a baseball bat, uh, an AK-47, and <laughs> a sword. Yeah, a sword would be cool, ninja style. What movie have you seen more times than any other movie? Oh. Probably like Jumanji or something that I watched as a kid. We only had like five like tapes. Mighty Ducks D2, I think was probably one of them. There was some movies we had like, we only had a handful of VHSs. So I think we just ran them back like a hundred times, you know? I think Bloodsport is the one that I really liked. As a kid, man, I think I knew every word from that movie from beginning to the end. Kickboxing was one of my favorites too. Uh, yeah, definitely has a big impact in my fighting career. Cause man, I wanted to do stuff like that, you know. And I just used to fight with my cousins after. You know, the movie was done. We got in the street crazy, just flying, kick each other, playing around. But you know, I've I've always really enjoyed martial arts, the fighting. And I think those movies really made a, a difference, you know. Cause I wanted to do something like that. Are you as flexible as Van Damme? I used to. As a kid, I used to do a full split. Nowadays, not so much. I'm flexible in jiu-jitsu, you know, where I need to be, but not, not like Van Damme. <laughs> Crazy. Do you have a favorite karaoke song? Nope, don't do karaoke. I'm a terrible singer and <laughs> never tried it. <laughs> I know what bad sounds like, and when I sing to myself, I know it's bad. So I wouldn't do it in front of people. I'm, I don't do karaoke. I'm way too monotone and uh, yeah, not my thing. Have you tried? Have you even, even I think I have, but it's like a pathetic, disappointing performance. What is the cutest animal on earth? Puppies. <laughs> that was quick, man. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> It was like a speed question, huh? <laughs> What's the scariest animal? Bears. Yeah, or sharks. I'll swim on the beach in the daylight and stuff, but I don't like to spend much time there. Snake, man. I hate snakes. You know, uh, 
they're really scary, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't even want to look at them, you know. I don't like looking at snakes. I think they're scary. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I just sweat a lot. <laughs> thinking about snakes. <laughs> yeah, I'm already sweating thinking about them, man. For real. No snakes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> A couple seasons during a Christmas break, I was like in my dad's place and it was like in the woods and there was nothing to do there except like have drinks over Christmas and watch Game of Thrones all day. So I liked the the, the sword uh, chair, uh, the iron chair or something. Iron throne. Yeah. I actually got to sit in that. It was in uh, the studio. When, that we were doing promo in Toronto for the, I think it was the Robbie Lawler fight. And I actually have an Instagram picture of me sitting on it. And I, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm actually watching it right now. I'm on season, I started season five last night. You know, uh, yeah, for right, right now that's the one that I'm watching actually, Game of Thrones. No spoilers, no, please. <laughs> I just started season five. It's a very cool show. It was this one scene where it was like, I think it was like one of the mountain or, one of the other big characters was fighting one of like some guy to like who he was like fighting for that little midget guy who was uh, un like he was gonna get killed and uh, yeah so that was cool. I don't know I don't know if midget is like uh, is like allowed or you have to use short people or small person. But forgive me for my ignorance. Um, and yeah, and it ended with him getting his head crushed. Yeah, his, his eyeballs got pushed into the back of his head. Yeah, what a crazy scene. <laughs> How do you think it all ends? Everybody dead. It seems like everybody dies on that thing, man. So uh, everybody's going to die in the end. That's my take on that. OK. If a dog wore pants, would he wear them like this or like this? Oh. I would say the right. I would say this one and the, the back legs. I would consider those as arms. I don't know. <laughs> uh, second for sure. What? Uh, it makes more sense. The other way, I don't think you're going to find a waist that big. <laughs> but you know, definitely the, the second one. What were some of your worst pre-fighter jobs? Um, I did dishwashing. I worked as a laborer on a contract site. That was terrible. Um, I prefabricate, prefabricated walls at like a construction site. I uh, did this weird night shift job where I was like doing like wire, like it was like this wire thing where you would like I don't know, they built all kinds of crap out of wires, <laughs> it was really bizarre, but uh, just weird odd jobs that kind of like got me through like training fees and stuff like that. I worked at, I worked at a grocery store, all terrible jobs, hated every single one of them. <laughs> the worst one was construction, because I did it all. I've always wanted to work and have my own things, buy my own stuff. And I did it all. My dad used to be, he used to work at siding, you know, so I, one summer and I was in high school, I was three months away from him. It was terrible. So thank God I found fighting. <laughs> Bad memories for sure. I mean, the worst thing is being up in the stairs, you know, they walk around these three stores and they, it's just this little thing that you walk on in the stairs behind it. Man, it was, it was scary. I thought I was going to die, you know, and they're just walking around like it's nothing. So yeah, not a, not a good experience. What's the best single moment you've ever had during a fight? I mean, that's from every fight, every win, for example. I mean, raise the hands. There's no better feeling than that. When you raise your hands, you walk back to the locker rooms. It doesn't matter how big or how small the fight is. That's an indescribable feeling right there. So really, you know, all the hard work, everything you went through. Actually, only guys that lost before knows how good that feeling is. You know, you lose a fight, you lose two fights. I mean, then you win. No other feelings like that, you know, so raising your hands, that's the biggest thing. I always like that feeling when I finish that first round and I sit on the stool and I just know I'm winning, I'm going to win. That's always a really, like, cool feeling to have and you get to go out there and, like, do it. 
So, you know, when you come back after that first round, you're just feeling like, yeah, I got this. And, you know, you can go out there and kick ass. It's a pretty relieving feeling. What is the worst feeling you've ever had during a fight? Like the worst, like most stressed was the Robbie Lawler fight. I had to break through a bunch of walls. Uh, the, um, the Carlos Condon fight, I was pretty high stressed, but not as much. But uh, definitely the Robbie Lawler. But at the same note, afterwards, when you and you really sit back and you look at the experience, I wouldn't change it for anything because you grow, you get to know who you are when you break down those walls and you go through those, th those hard things in life, you get to find out something about yourself that you wouldn't in any other situation. If you could change any rule of MMA, what rules would you change? I think I would allow every elbow, like every type, the way you throw, I think that would be a good thing. Because, you know, if you're throwing like this or like this, I don't think it changes anything. So the elbows, you know, should be legal. However you throw it from up, down, you know, it doesn't, I don't think that changes anything, you know. I think headbutts would be n number one. Headbutts. Yeah, that would have to change. Uh, it's just an effective tool that a lot of people wouldn't be able to stall in a lot of positions. It would put guys on the bottom at a severe disadvantage and would change the dynamic of the guard and uh, jujitsu players. I think it would, it would just change everything and then followed up by like knees to the head on the ground, kicks to the head on the ground, and vertical elbows. What is your dream finish in like a championship fight? Like uh, Just brutality. I always kind of daydream about it. It'd be cool to be able to unleash that. So. As a fan, what's been your favorite fight to watch of all time? I really liked those Pride tournaments back in the day. I thought those were amazing. When Gomi won that Bushido tournament, I thought those were pretty cool fights. Some good ones back then. Currently, oh man, it, when I get asked that question, I feel like oh, there's so many that I, it's like over, overwhelming almost, you know? Like it's, there's so many over the years that I can't pick. Remember that Clay Guida, Roger Huerta? That one was a barn burner. My fight with Robbie was a crazy one. I think one of my all-time favorites was Melvin Manhoff against Cyborg. I still remember that fight, both of them going back and forth, doing that, that tired. There's plenty of other, honestly, man, the one Roy when he fought on Robbie Lawler the second time. That was an amazing fight to watch, to show anybody. What is the worst fight you've ever seen? Uh, my fight with Steven Thompson. I was really bummed about that one. Do you have a particular or a pro wrestling move that you've always wanted to do in a fight? Yeah. Maybe do a backflip and land on a guy with the knees on the chest or something. <laughs> I've seen a lot of guys doing that, doing the backflip off the cage and landing on them. I mean, it would be cool, but I'll probably never try. <laughs> it's just too risky. Climb on the cage, you know, climb on the cage on. land on a guy, or then just run, you know, off the wall, you flip, bam. That would be cool, you know. <laughs> I'd like to choke slam someone. <laughs> cool, that's it. <laughs> hey, can you choke slam me right now? Yeah. <laughs> you want it? I don't think you would survive it. I was like, that's not a good yeah, idea. That's what hurts. <laughs> yeah, that's what hurts.